I conducted my postdoctoral research project on Cumberland Island National Seashore. Cumberland Island is the southernmost of Georgia's barrier islands. It measures about 5 kilometers at its widest and less than 25 kilometers at its longest. Despite the relatively small size of Cumberland Island, it is absolutely covered in cottonmouths, also known as water moccasins, eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, canebrake rattlesnakes, alligators, and worst of all, ticks. I mean a lot of ticks. When small, the ticks would completely cover blades of grass. The otherwise green grass would have a leaf or two swarmed with ticks. It appeared to be a wriggling black mass. Hundreds of ticks would fall onto one's pants while walking by. Each of these ticks was hungry for blood, and they had nothing better, better to do than look for a meal. I prepared for the onslaught each morning before heading to the field. I wore long pants with rubber bands at the bottom. I sealed my long sleeve shirt with more rubber bands. I wore a hat. I covered my boots with sulfur. I doused my clothes and my body in products containing DEET. I soaked all my clothes in a liquid repellent allowed only in a few states at the time and subsequently banned throughout the USA. I don't recall the name of it. Any skin that showed through was soaked with skin so soft to capture and drown any invertebrates that sneaked past the clothing and other protective measures. Despite these radical measures, a full body skin inspection at the end of the day produced the same result every day. At least one tick was burrowing itself into my body. The following se field season, the one immediately after I left Georgia for my first professorial position at Texas A&M University, had every single field technician, graduate student, postdoc, and faculty member who worked on the island being diagnosed with Lyme disease. Every single one. I dodged a bullet, despite the unpleasant experience of warding off ticks every day. On the topic of death by a thousand ticks, or I mean death by a thousand cuts, I turned to a major synthesis published in April of 2019. Global Trends to 2000, Challenges and Choices for Europe was published by the European Strategy and Policy Analysis System. This major synthetic report includes the following paragraph. Quote, An increase of 1.5 degrees is the maximum the planet can tolerate. Should temperatures increase further beyond 2030, we will face even more droughts, floods, extreme heat, and poverty for hundreds of millions of people. The likely demise of the most vulnerable populations, and at worst, the extinction of humankind altogether. Well, that's inconvenient, if only because years ago we blew through the 1.5 C above the 1750 baseline. Earth is currently much closer to 2 C than 1.5 C above the 1750 baseline. In other words, we likely have already passed the threshold required for extinction of Homo sapiens. Doing so raises the potential for causing our near-term demise. Will it actually do so? Probably not, if only because the death by a thousand cuts route has so much competition from other phenomena. If we manage to avoid or reverse a near-term ice-free Arctic Ocean, conspicuous consumption, a broiling earth, loss of aerosol masking, the implosion of nuclear facilities, loss of ocean ecosystems, and solar storms, then I'd guess 1.5 C above the 1750 baseline will degrade habitat for our species enough to cause our demise. Without question, the combination of these factors will do the most dire of tricks. Thanks for viewing this video. If you appreciated it, please subscribe to this channel. Additional perks are available to members of the Nature Bass Last YouTube channel, so continue joining there too.